Okay, thank you very much for uh, the invitation here. And uh, I'm going to be talking today about some modeling and potential of um, a number of different negative emissions technologies um, and including BECs in those. Um, and thanks to uh, all of these guys, particularly thanks really to uh, these two, Pignatelli and Sorensen, who did the um, detailed model of carbonate looping plus um, uh, ocean liming, which um, is pretty good since they uh, did it as a uh, undergraduate research project. So um, pretty impressive of them. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk today about three different um, projects that we've done. Um, I'm going to talk about um, an initial study that we did scoping out the potential for fi five different um, negative emissions technologies. Um, how we did that, I'm then going to go on to briefly discuss a um, technology uh, project that we did, TESBIC, which is a techno-economic study of um, CCS with biomass. And then I'm going to move on to one final discussion, which is um, a combination technology of a particular CCS technology with ocean liming. So uh, I don't really need to... Um, go through this. Why do negative emissions? Well, it gives you a ceiling price on your carbon emissions. Um, if you have something to uh, take out the negative, uh, to do negative emissions, you don't necessarily need to do some of these extremely expensive options for CO2 mitigation. So the um, first off, I'm going to talk about uh, an initial scoping study which provided consistent potential and cost estimates for CO2 capture from these five negative emissions technologies. And that gives an idea of whether or not these things could be um, used in the next sort of uh, 10 or 20 years um, and looking at some of the ramp up rates as well. And then furthermore, detailed model for these. Um, the project that we were doing was based on mainly the UK, um, UK uh, targets. So we, we have a target in the UK to re um, reduce our emissions by 80% um, by 2050. And um, key focus of these is on uh, reduction of emissions options. So power is supposed to be going pretty much entirely um, CO2 neutral by then. Um, however, these negative emissions technologies are important, as we've heard before, when mitigation is not happening fast enough, or where alternative abatement costs are too high, or simply where you can't mitigate the um, CO2 itself. There's a brief taxonomy of uh, different CCS options, uh, carbon positive CCS, so you're looking at uh, maybe putting CCS on um, oil sands production, uh, carbon neutral CCS, so that's basically power stations, um, that sort of thing. And then what we're looking at, carbon negative CCS, um, where we're looking at actually removing CO2 from the atmosphere somehow. So, for the initial study that I'm going to talk about, we identified actually five potential options and did a detailed thermodynamic analysis of these options. Um, we looked at other relevant analyses, such as the siting of them, feedstock av availability. So, for BEX, it's obviously the availability of um, the biomass that's important, but for some of the other options, it's availability of limestone, these sorts of things. For ocean liming, the availability of ships to actually take the um, limestone out or the calcium oxide out and put it into the um, sea. Scaling up issues, economics, and ramp up rates and associated constraints with this. Those turn out to be, if you're looking at something for 
2020, 2030, actually some of the most important things. It's extremely difficult to ramp up um, the production of some of the things you need to um, do um, the uh, carbon negative technologies, such as shipbuilding. Um, you would need to approximately double the number of ships if you were to do um, large scale um, ocean liming. And the data for the first section is from public domain sources. And obviously, as we've heard before, some of these show some very wide ranges in um, availability. And uh, um, this leads to a lot of potential um, for difficulty in uh, what we, uh, in, in estimating how they can work. So the five potential options that we looked at were becks, artificial trees, lime soda process, another way of taking uh, CO2 direct from the atmosphere, um, augmented ocean disposal. So this is taking calcium carbonate, um, taking calcium carbonate, decarbonizing that, um, releasing the CO2 or capturing the CO2, and then dumping it into the ocean. Uh, the point is that in the ocean, if you get the kinetics right, as uh, David Keith was saying before, you can actually form a bicarbonate, whereas originally these things were um, simply calcium carbonate, um, meaning that you capture an extra mole of CO2 per mole of calcium oxide that you uh, uh, form, and also biochar. So I think, uh, I don't think I really need to go through the uh, background of BEX. Um, what we found with this <coughs> was that BEX was by far really the most advanced of the air capture technologies. Um, the individual components for BEX have been built and could really be put together um, right now. It's not a problem with technology, it's a problem with economics. Um, there's a strong economic incentive to actually do this. You're producing power, you're producing heat as well, um, and it could be deployed straight away. Um, the mitigation to potential in the UK depends on the biomass sourcing, and a realistic UK system would use a percentage of imports which is quite an important thing. You've got to think about whether or not um, the biomass that you're using is displacing biomass utilization back home where it's coming from. Um, I've, I've spoken to some people in Brazil who were um, taking advantage of the fact that their biomass costs or that they, that they could sell their biomass for a nice high price and they were looking at converting some of their um, plant to coal because it was um, much better for them to sell the biomass and then use coal in their plant. So that's you know, a very important aspect when you start thinking about huge imports of biomass in um, particular areas. Um, so we found that the potential for BEX could be between um, 4 to 15% of UK emissions mitigated, and that would, recommend, that would be relative to about 9 to 32% of power generated in that manner. The barriers put for adoption are regulatory and including public acceptance, and um, the land use changes that sort of thing that we're, uh, we've been talking about already. And also competition from liquid fuels market for the um, primary biomass. Um, next steps, R&D pilot and scale up. Again, the life cycle analysis of this is so important. And the ETI study, the Energy Technologies Institute study, um, they're a joint um, academia and industrial um, system and uh, or organization and um, that is what we uh, moved on to from there. 
So this technology was chosen for further modeling. It's a promising technology. Um, the TESBIC project, which I'll just briefly allude to, um, wasn't part of this first study, but it was a very detailed study of all um, of a great number of CCS options, looking at how the biomass interacted with the um, CCS option. Um, so looking at some of the things like co-firing, um, how much you could actually uh, um, co-fire, all of these sorts of things. And it was a collaboration between uh, Leeds University, Cambridge, Imperial, e 4 Tech, which is a consultancy, EDF, Drax, Dusan Babcock, and CMCL, which is another consultancy. So we had a good mix of um, academics who are sort of rushing around, thinking up new wonderful technologies for uh, CCS and not really minding so much about the capital costs, and Dusan Babcock, who always reminded us to actually keep an eye on the bottom line. So I, I don't expect you to uh, be able to read this. Um, the initial study, 28 options for different BEX um, technologies, including co-firing uh, co with amine scrubbing, dedicated amine scrubbing, a, a large number of CCS options, both near and far away from um, development uh, and deployment. So we went into you know, whether or not ionic liquids were likely to be available by 2030 and by 2050, um, what that would do to the uh, potential for the deployment. But we were looking for things that could be, could be deployed by 2020. So that narrowed down our focus quite a lot. And we were looking at technology readiness levels, and um, they had to be at a reasonably high technology readiness level in order for us to um, take them on. Anyway, we did a lot of techno-economic work, looked at um, how likely they were to uh, succeed. And the upshot of the thing was that chemical looping and post-combustion carbonate looping came out well in terms of efficiency penalties and in terms of uh, overall costs. Certainly by um, 2050, that sort of time. <coughs> so, moving on from the BECs, we looked at artificial trees. Um, so, uh, you know, putting an artificial tree by the roadside and capturing the CO2, and it, it sounds lovely. It's an uh, uh, interesting idea, but you know, can they compete with real trees? Uh, they, cost, they cost a lot of money. Um, some of them are highly complicated. You know, I was saying last night that the problem in the UK is if you put one of these out by the roadside or something, you know, it's got sodium hydroxide and all this sort of stuff. You've got health and safety implications. And you've also got the fact that uh, young boys will go and throw stones at it. Right? I say young boys, might be young girls. It's going to be young boys. Right? Um, key advantages, they can in principle be put anywhere. Um, but they potentially need to use water. Um, <coughs> and the cost estimates for these technologies are highly variable and with a lack of independent scrutiny. Um, people who are selling you these technologies like them, and few other people have done the independent um, scrutiny. Uh, mit mitigation potential is large and needs to go next steps, look at uh, trials data. Lime soda, another way of taking CO2 out from the atmosphere. Again, detailed economic evaluation required. Augmented ocean disposal, so this is um, producing calcium oxide, dumping it in the sea, and eventually producing a bicarbonate which um, absorbs CO2 from the, uh, uh, from the atmosphere. The key advantage for this is that it helps to um, solve some of the issues with ocean acidification. So it does two things. It takes CO2 out, but it also um, helps to mitigate ocean acidification, which is a very important thing. And 
Also, it can be coupled with a particular CCS process, which I'm going to discuss briefly in a second. Um, biochar, you've heard about. Um, it's <coughs> quite advanced. It's an ancient process, and in the right area, it can work well. Uh, scale up's the issue. Where does the biomass come from? Okay, so the initial uh, scoping study, Bex worked out quite well, and um, ocean liming came out reasonably sensibly. So I'll just quickly discuss um, the detailed modeling that we did. So we have an um, industrial source, a CO2 point source here. We have fuel and air, burns, produces a fuel gas, and then in one reactor, we have calcium oxide being reacted to form calcium carbonate. In a second reactor, we have the CO2 being driven off and um, producing a, a pure stream of CO2. We have a spent stream of calcium oxide here. This calcium carbonate, calcium oxide, cycles between these two reactors, basically taking CO2 at 15% and making it into CO2 at 100% here. The advantage of this, it's a high temperature system, so you have a, um, so you burn your, um, you burn a small amount of coal in here to raise the energy to um, take your CO2 off your carbonate looping cycle, but you can put a steam cycle onto this. The energy, the heat is available in this at about 650 degrees C, so the exothermic reaction step of CO2 capture you can actually gain the heat back that you're putting in in this area. Then we've got power plant adopting calcium looping based um, carbon capture and then going on to dumping this spent calcium oxide that we've got into the ocean to form um, lime to form the bicarbonate. And at the top, we've got the basic combustion system. So what we did was when we mixed them all together, we decided that we would look at ocean liming in conjunction with carbonate looping. So we did a number of um, technologies. We looked at um, basic straight combustion of biomass or straight combustion of coal, co-fired or straight biomass fired. Combustion associated with the calcium looping post-combustion capture technology I've to talked about and combustion calcium looping and using the spent material uh, the spent calcium oxide purge um, for ocean liming. You can read these at your leisure. Warning though, this is a first pass of a uh, analysis. The uh, efficiency penalty requires, uh, the efficiency penalty of this looks quite high at the moment, um, but it is substantially lower when you do the heat integration fully. All right, so. We've done full economic analysis. We've sized the individual units for this and um, used a number of different uh, boiler costs from reputable sources. Come up with an Aspen model of the thing. Um, process efficiency starts out on this axis about 42% for a coal-fired system and ends up about 39% for straight firing, co firing for straight firing of biomass. Down here, we've got different systems for um, co-firing and for um, uh, uh, straight uh, for firing with CCS or for co-firing. So the emissions factor and the cost of electricity, again, as uh, we were seen earlier, we go up to about 12 cents per kilowatt. If you have a biomass fire boiler, you have a biomass system with CCS on it and you're taking about 1,500 grams of CO2 out of the atmosphere per kilowatt of electricity producing. Um, we went through all sorts of different technologies, different combinations of uh, carbonate looping and uh, the CCS, and um, selected results. Essentially, what we found was that it's much cheaper to mitigate CO2 using biomass, by using co-firing, um, or by full firing, than by CCS, but again, you're limited by the CO2. And the more biomass you use, the lower the avoided cost. Um, so some of our avoided costs down here were about $30 um, dollars per tonne of CO2, but the best were straight use of biomass. 
If you're, limit, if you're not limited by biomass availability, it's better to co-fire. Um, CCS efficiency penalty is a little high. We need to in, uh, integrate the heat a bit better. And adding the sequestrate, these sort of things down here, um, reduces the costs a little bit more, down to sort of $27 a tonne. So we looked at a range of different technologies for um, negative emissions technologies, potential. Of these, BEX was the most promising option. The unique synergy between BEX and a particular calcium looping system, post-combustion CO2 capture system, uh, and ocean liming has been investigated. The cost of electricity from such plants has been estimated and sadly has been found to more than double. But the cost of CO2 avoided can be quite low with these. There's significant scope for optimization of this model um, and this, that optimization should bring the cost down further. Okay, thanks very much. Questions for Paul? So uh, the uh, picture you had of the uh, artificial tree, mm -hmm. uh, you could probably work with the cellular companies to combine cell tower work with... Uh, you've got to make a trees. lot of artificial trees. <laughs> I mean, this is it. You, you've got to make a lot no, of artificial... I have, I have a question about the, the... So the calcium carbonate, calcium oxide that you, you, you have available from the process, the carbon dioxide that you have... Seek You've already captured it as part of the so so. So you captured that already. Yeah, you put it into you put it into the calciner of the. Uh, oh, so um, I didn't. I, I missed the the calciner system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And here is where you put is where you um, put the calcium the the fresh limestone in. Sorry, you can't read it properly. No. <laughs> um, and the uh, it produces calcium oxide, but you're capturing the CO2 from that unit as well. Right, so the CO2 then becomes part of this waste stream and as a mineral. Well, no, 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 it's not mineralization. It's just a high concentration CO2 oh, okay. stream. Okay, so you still have to you drive it off it the. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's still got to go underground. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, <coughs> so. Um, Okay, the biomass energy is generating carbon dioxide, and you have limestone that you, in one of your processes here, that you want to calcine and add the calcium hydroxide. Why not just react the CO2 from the bio, biomass firing with water and limestone and generate, capture the CO2 as calcium bicarbonate and put that in the ocean rather than having to worry about generating molecular CO2 here? Well, because you get a much higher um, negative emissions here if you actually capture the CO2. You, you're putting... The purge stream is not necessarily... It doesn't have to be a huge uh, amount. You're putting in a, you know, maybe 5% of calcium oxide per mole of CO2 you're capturing, so 0 0.05 moles of lime per... You can do it direct. I mean, you know, there's... there's Nothing against doing it direct. You, you can uh, you know, calcine your lime and then uh, put it straight into the ocean. But by integrating it with the CO2 capture system, you end up with a much um, better negative emissions from the system. Well, I don't follow that because um, you can capture and store the, the CO2 coming from the biomass as calcium bicarbonate. One of the carbons comes from the biomass, the other carbon comes from the carbonate. You put that in the ocean as the storage medium. You generate no molecular CO2 that you have to then store. You've, you've, incorpor you've integrated the capture and the, and the storage of the carbon can, in that way. You can, fire, you can fire a lime kiln with biomass quite easily. That's easily done. You fire a lime kiln with biomass, and then you put the uh, material into the ocean, and it forms the bicarbonate. That's fine. But overall, your um, negative emissions are enhanced, and you produce power by having a post-combustion capture unit on there. Let's, we'll let's talk, talk about further. this one more in the discussion. I think it's a...
terrific topic. Is there one more question? If not, thanks again, Paul. <laughs>